Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Michaels.com. Today we're going to work on the Wavy Crochet Afghan. This is a really fabulous idea. Both of these patterns or pictures are the same and it's just a matter of the color choices in order to do it. Maybe you want something more country setting, more mid-century. Maybe you want something more bohemian. It doesn't matter. This project is really quite amazing. So here we have a simple wave afghan and when I say it's simple it truly is and in fact this is the very first stitch I ever taught on the Crochet Crowd YouTube back in 2008 and you know what it's almost 10 years later that I'm revisiting this pattern but I never th ever thought to think about this pattern when it comes to colored transitional yarn like the Karen Cakes and because of that I really get to see the ideas of color. So I did a, a mini sample of this and I just did a smaller sample and I'm gonna teach you how to make it a different size if you want to but you can see that when you do a smaller size that it doesn't change colors as quickly as you see here. So the length of your project in the distance matters on how fast it will change in order to give it the looks that you see here. So it's a really kind of a neat idea. It's a repeat pattern of four different rows that make it really quite fabulous. I know when I learned this as a kid I was like so blown away with it because I thought it was so complicated but now that I'm like 30 years into the crochet I realized that I can almost do this in my sleep. So today I'm going to show you a diagram that I made for myself and I'm gonna show you the yarn that's been featured within this particular project. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So the projects are featuring the regular Karen cakes as you see it here and on this side here we have the zucchini loaf and on the other side we have the pumpkin spice and when we look down on the color you can see all the colors that will be happening within this project. You can see the beautiful tinges here of the oranges. I just absolutely love it. Or maybe you want something a little more neutral or something more accenting for your home decor if it's not so bold. This is a really great option. So you only need four balls of Karen Cakes in order to do this whole blanket and it is really quite fabulous. So let me take you to the diagram and explain what we're gonna be getting into today and then I'm gonna show you how to get started. So if you're new to crochet or unfamiliar with crochet diagrams I always do a diagram for myself so that I understood it and once I did the diagram I realized that I had done this pattern way back about 10 years ago. So what we have here is that if you would like to change the size of your blanket you just have to do a multiples of 14 and then add two at the end. So you go 14, 14, 14, 14. Once you're satisfied with the width of it just add two and then your project will remain in balance in order to work out. The project also has it so that you are uh, chaining 170 if you want want to exactly match that one but of course if you want to change the size maybe even go for something bigger you just need some more Karen Cakes and if you want to go smaller to a baby size you can do that. So what we have here is a diagram that's really quite straightforward and we're going to be re repeating rows 1, 2, 3 and 4 and I repeated just to write it down for rows 1 and 2 just to show you how it balances out with each other. So let me show you exactly what you're looking at. So I told you that it's an easy pattern. It really truly is. Watch. Rows number one and three are always just single crochet. You don't have to count. You just single crochet yourself across. Isn't that fabulous? So the only rows you need to be concerned about are rows number two and four. So once you get that done you go back to rows one, two, three and four and then one, two, three, four and work your way up. So the difference between two and four is the difference of where the shell is. So in row number two the shell is a partial on the outside and then we just single crochet seven and then we do a shell of seven and then we single crochet seven and then because it's an edge it's only gonna be four. But as you work your way across it'll always be seven, 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 seven. So your magic number is Ernie's favorite number of the number seven. So once then you move up to row number three it's just single crochet back across and then row number four instead of putting the shell on the outside we just start off with the single crochet with th uh, four, in the, uh, four right in a row and then we skip three put seven into the next one, skip three and then seven again going across and then it's just a matter of doing that again. So then you skip three, seven, skip three and then you keep on going across. So it's just a matter of just understanding that every, every one that's an, uh, uh, that's an even number is basically it's a different location for these shells and because of the way that it's working out it makes it look really awesome. So what you're gonna have here is that on top of every shell you are going to have three rows that appears to be single crochet because the next row is single crochet and then the next row has the shells but this row is still single crochet and then the next row is still single crochet just like so. So when you look at it from a pattern point of view 
just like you see here. You can see how the shells just kind of build on top of each other as you go. So there is the shell and then there's one, two and three uh, of single crochets and then the shell uh, reappears. But in the see here the next time that the shell shows up is that it's gonna be slightly over and then it's brought back. So over and back just like this. Okay, so you're ready to go. So you're gonna need a five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to play today. You're going to need your Karen Cakes yarn if you wish to play with that yarn as well. You'll need four balls in order to do this particular pattern and we're gonna start off with a slip knot. So you can either match what the pattern says of 170 or you can just chain in multiples of 14. For myself I'm just gonna do multiples of 14 and when I'm satisfied I'll add two at the very end. So I just yarning over pulling through. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen and fourteen. So there is one multiple of fourteen right there. So you can decide for yourself is it big enough yes or no. If not do it again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen and fourteen. So once you're satisfied with the length of it you just have to add two. So if you are doing 170 you can just do 170 but if you wanna do multiples that's exactly what you have to do. So in row number one we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So one and two count it back and just turn it over and get the back loop only of the chain and I want you to single crochet yourself all the way across the chain. So just going into the next one that's the back only and single crochet and the next one and etc. So go all the way across your chain with just single crochet. So I'm coming up to the other side of the chain and I'm going into my very last one with single crochet. So that was row number one and I'm gonna turn my work. So rows one and three are always just gonna be straight single crochet back and forth, uh, back across. So let's go for row number two. Row number two is a half shell to begin and then we're gonna start establishing the spacing and then another shell. So to do that we're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three and that counts as a, a double crochet and into the same one where you've done the join I want you to put in three more double crochets. So with the chaining of three and these three that counts as four double crochets in the end. So now I want you to skip three stitches. So one, two and three and now for the next seven stitches in a row single crochet. So let's count those out together. I just did one and two, three, four, five, six and seven. So once you have your seven done you're gonna skip the next three and then you're gonna put seven trebles or doubles into the next one after that. So and there's a fourth one away. So one, two, three and four, five, six and seven. So the repeat pattern all the way across is gonna be exactly the same. So you're gonna skip three and then the next seven will be seven uh, single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So then if you're continuing along then you'll skip three and then the next one after that is gonna be seven of these shells again. Skip another three and then another seven in a row. So once you come to the very end you'll find that you'll end up with four stitches left. So you're gonna skip the next three and into the final one you're only going to put in four doubles because it's a, it's a, it's a half. So just do four double crochets right into the very end. just like that. So you can see that the shells kind of just went in there. You still have your single crochets in the middle and etc. So let's begin row number three. So turning our work and going for row number three. So row number three just like one is what? It's just a single crochet. So chain up one and into the same one just do one single crochet and then you just keep adding a single crochet into each one as you go all the way across. So you don't technically need to count anything. Right, you just go one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. So please do that all the way for row number three. So I'm coming up to the end of row number three and I'm just single crocheting my way all the way back. Don't forget that turning chain that you started is also a stitch. So just single crochet there. So now we're gonna turn and work. 
So you can see that this makes this wave look more accented but it's actually just a single crochet sitting on top. So this time in row number four the shell is now gonna sit in the middle here. So it's gonna be shifting over and going into the middle. So you have one over here, here and etc. So all these shells will be in between the existing shells. So to begin the first section here we're going to chain up one and the first four in a row will all be one single crochet each. And now the fun it begins. It's just like before it's just been shifted. So the next three are empty. So one, two and three go to the fourth and you're gonna put in seven doubles into that one. So one, two, three, four, this is five, six and seven. And then you skip the next three. So one, two and three and then start on the fourth. And go on and seven single crochets in a row. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And then you skip the next three. So one, two, three go to the fourth and then you put in seven doubles again. So all of these shells appear in between in between the resting points of the shells that are in the rows below. And you wanna make sure you get seven in there. So if your counts are ever wrong and I did this on the sample too is that one of these I did a six by accident. So you know you could just gotta watch your counts a little bit. So skip the next three. So one, two and three and then the final four once you get all the way back across will be just one single crochet each. So you just have to make, maintain the pattern as you're going all the way across and that's what it looks like so far. So let's turn our work and we're back to row number one. So row number one, one and three are the same. What are they? Single crochets, that's right. So just chain up one and one single crochet into each going all the way across and I'll show you how to do number two again and make sure that you got yourself off to the right start. There is no border for this particular afghan so it's really quite an easy uh, project once you understand how everything is working out. So I'll see you at the end of this and we'll repeat doing row number two just to make sure you got it. So I've come all the way to the other side and you're gonna see it over here. So you'll notice that this is the right side here and you can tell by the shells to always be on the same side that you'll see the other side looks slightly different and so the right side to me looks more desirable. That's probably why it's called the right side too. So let's uh, repeat row number two. So row number two was down here. You have the half a shell that you see and how many single crochet rows are above? So one, two and three. Remember what I said here is that there's always like three single crochet rows in between things. So the shell is now gonna appear here and so I can count it. So one, two and three single crochets are here. So it's just a neat thing to look for if you, if you want to. So to start row number two again it's just chaining a three counts as a double crochet and in the same one you're going to put in three more double crochets. So you're gonna do a half a shell on the outside there. So how many are you gonna skip? You're gonna skip three. So one, two and three and go to the fourth and you're gonna single crochet seven in a row. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then how many are you gonna skip? It's gonna be three. So one, two and three and it's gonna be in the fourth and if you follow it up it looks like it's in the middle too. So that's a good indication that we're right. So there's gonna be seven double crochets in a row and the fourth one away. And then how many are you gonna skip? Three. So one, two and three and then the next seven in a row are gonna be single crochets. Okay, and so you just continue that same idea going all the way across and then when you get to the edge you're gonna skip four or skip uh, three. So one, two and three and the final stitch is gonna be a half a shell. So there'll only be four doubles into that one there in order to bring it back in balance. Just like that. 
So it's a really neat pattern in order to play with. Let me just back out the camera a little bit and you can see that the shells really kind of produce a really neat idea and with your Karen Cake yarn that you're gonna be playing with you can see that the colors would transition on its own and just like you see here and it's really quite awesome and it depends on the color that you wanna choose as well and the designers have purposely chosen the certain widths of 170 in order to get the colors to really line up properly. There is a method to the madness even though you may not think so. So it's a really quite an awesome idea in order for you to play with and I hope that you really enjoyed this pattern and on behalf of michaels.com as well as the crochet crowd have a great day good luck with this project and make sure you post your projects online we'd love to see we'll see you again we'll see you. bye bye